Hello friends, let's discuss general awareness. And as you would understand that sometime last week we didn't have any session and the couple of sessions that we usually have, but uh, we have, uh, you know, brought in an exclusive one session uh, clubbing the best of uh, current affairs that happened in the period mentioned on the slide here. Okay, so you're not going to miss anything important, my friends. We'll have it covered for you. Here's the question. The first question is about which country won a bid to host the 2029 Asian Winter Games at Trojina, a planned mountain resort. And there is no such place, actually. They're going to build it. Okay, they're going to build it. Uh, this is in Saudi Arabia. This is going to be in Saudi Arabia, in the northwest corner of Saudi, in the northwest corner of Saudi Arabia on the Red Sea. Uh, this will be a part of um, a place called Neom City. Neom City. Now, Neom City itself has not been built. Uh, it's a futuristic city with flying cars, you know, um, with a 170 kilometer stretch of uh, continuous territory. You know, um, I would suggest you Google the Neom City and you would get some weird pictures. Uh, in the Saudi Arabian desert, the Crown Prince uh, and the Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, wants to create the world's best futuristic city. Now, this may seem like a fantasy today, but you never know how things may turn out in the future. So he said that uh, we plan to build a mountain resort. Yes, a hot Saudi Arabian place, you know, environment. They want to build a mountain resort that would have um, the right kind of equipment, the right kind of environment, the right kind of climate for conducting winter sports. Yes, you heard it right. Yeah. So Trojina is a part of the Neon, Neon city in Saudi Arabia. Um, see, the last time the Winter Olympics were held was in, uh, I think, 2017. 2017, and um, you could write this, 2017 was the last time they were held. And uh, this was in Sapporo in Japan. Sapporo in Japan. Sapporo Obihiro. That's a place. Hmm? Sapporo Obihiro in Japan. In Japan. So after that, we have not had Winter Olympics, uh, Winter Games, Asian Winter Games. And um, to boot, between today and 2029, there won't be Asian Winter Games. Yes. So the last one in Jap the Japanese, um, you know, towns of Twins, towns of Sapporo Obihiro. And um, the next one coming up in 2029 in Trojina, Neom City in Saudi Arabia. Now, what about the Summer Asian Games? Let me clear this and bring to you the Summer Asian Games. The Summer Asian Games would be held, uh, um, see, if you go back the previous, the previous one, 2018, I'll write it here, you, you write in straight order. Jakarta, you know, this is the capital of Indonesia, Palambang. Jakarta, Palambang in 2018. 2000, this is 2018. Um, if you look at 2022, this was to be held this year in um, Huangzhou, which is in China. But uh, because of the COVID policies there, the government says we will not hold these games before uh, summer next year. Now, this is just a prediction. Things may go worse. You know, they may scrap the games altogether if they don't happen next year. And 2023, sorry, 2026 will be in Aichi, Nagoya, Japan. So summer, winter summer games, sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. Asian summer games or summer Asian games, you could call both. Both are fine. Summer Asian games. 2018, Jakarta, Palembang, 2022, Hong Kong, China, 2026, Aichi, Nagoya, Japan, uh, 2030, Qatar, Doha, Qatar, okay. Then in Saudi Arabia, you know, um, the same place, in fact, in the same country of Saudi Arabia, in a place, the capital city called Riyadh, what is it? Riyadh, which is the capital of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. So we got Asian games covered, completely covered. 
Okay. Let's go to the next one. Which country did 133 people die in a stampede? Stampede is a rush, you know, it's a kind of a unwelcome rush um, wherein people trample over each other to get out of a particular closed space or, you know, uh, it could be an open space also, but in a small place, a lot of people are squeezed in, you know, and people try to leave that space. As they try to leave that space, sometimes they all get into the space. Sometimes there is a rush and people trample on each other. And when people fall, especially when they fall, there is, um, you know, um, there is lack of oxygen. People find it difficult to breathe and they die from asphyxiation. Uh, that is lack of breath, basically, lack of, it's, you know, lack of oxygen. And uh, unfortunately, um, in Indonesia, there was this world, there was this club football match between two local clubs. And uh, there was a Baghdad in Hindi, Stampede is Baghdad. Yeah, there was a stampede and for, you know, people died, 133 people and lots of people injured. Now, where was this, uh, they could ask you this in the exam, exactly where in Indonesia did this happen? Okay, so you could write stampede in Malang city, Malang city in East Java province, in East Java. Malang city in Indonesia, Indonesia. And one more thing you could write is this. You could write is that um, Indonesia is going to host the under 20, 2023 football world cup, football world cup under 20, 2023, or you could put it this way, 2023 under 20 football world cup will be hosted by Indonesia okay so and if you could be asked let's say you are asked the name of the stadium you see you know you never know what examiners might ask so we mentioned the city we mentioned the country yeah we mentioned the province also but let's write the name of the city yeah the name of the disaster the sports oh, sorry the stadium uh, it's you could write Kanjuruhan Stadium, Kanjuruhan Stadium in Malang City, okay, in Malang City, and Malang City is, of course, as you know, in East Java province, and uh, this would be in the country of Indonesia. So, to surmise, a lot of people died, over 130 people died in a stampede at the Kanjuruhan, uh, you know. Um, stadium in Malang city in Indonesia so and Indonesia is also host going to host the under 20 football world cup next year fair I guess that should be it Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched 5G services fifth generation of mobile telephony fifth generation of telephony or telecommunications networks Fifth generation services in um, India at the 6th India Mobile or Mobile Congress in New Delhi. In this context, which of the following statements are true? Yeah, all of them are true. 5G will offer an internet speed many times faster than 4G. Yes, definitely yes. Um, the, yeah, there, could, there should not be two dots here. There should be only one. It, ha it offers higher bandwidth, which, which effectively means that you could connect more devices. Okay. And yeah, um, the government's, um, you know, more than 100 labs are going to be set up. I mean, all of them are right, actually. Um, three companies have got licenses for 5G. One is Geo, Reliance Geo. Uh, two is uh, Bharti Airtel. And the third one, ladies and gentlemen, is Vodafone Idea. Vodafone Idea or V. What a fun idea. Okay. In which, which city will host the UN World Geospatial Information Congress during the second week of October 2022? Hyderabad. Now, I want you to write the team of this conference. They might ask you this question. So, write team of the United Nations World Geospatial Information Congress. Team is Geo Enabling. The global village, 
जियो एनेबलिंग द ग्लोबल विलेज ग्लोबल विलेज को नो वन शुड बी लेफ्ट बिहाइंड नो वन शुड बी लेफ्ट बिहाइंड नो वन शुड बी लेफ्ट बिहाइंड ओके Um, you could write the name of maybe two three places here. We could write the names of organizations, some organization. Hyderabad is also home to the um, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology. Indian Institute of Chemical Technology. Chennai Central Leather Research Institute. Central Leather Research Institute. Kolkata uh, Botanical Survey of India Botanical Survey of India As per the UGC United University Grants Commission um, guidelines higher education institutions across India will now be allowed to create up to dash percent super numeracy seats of foreign students 25% um, see if a college has 100% 100 seats okay for Indians these higher education institutes are allowed to create another 25 seats 25% of the allocated seats for foreigners now I want you to understand this supernumerary. Write this. What does it mean? Supernumerary dash over and above, over and above the sanctioned strength, sanctioned enrollment. That's better. Sanctioned enrollment. Over and above the sanctioned enrollment. Yeah. So this won't impact the uh, admissions locally. Okay, I mean, say when you say locally, India-wise, but definitely they are going to create more seats for to accommodate foreigners, foreign students. So who is the chairman of the UGC? Jagdish Kumar. Jagdish Kumar. You could write this. Jagdish Kumar. Okay. Jagdish Kumar. Tulsi Tanti died recently. Identify the correct statements about him. All of them are right. Um, Suslan at one point, my friends, was the world's one of the world's most one of the world's most advanced uh, wind turbine companies. It still is uh, known to be a pioneer in wind energy. Yeah, but unfortunately, the company had accumulated a lot of debt, udhar, yeah, loans. and it's found that the going very tough especially because the government has changed some policy and um, renewable energy's policy has changed and because of this um, suzlon has found uh, the business environment quite tough for it they have accumulated lots lots of debts the you know the share price is not the company is not doing well in the stock market um, this guy died of a heart attack recently yeah chalo you know what tulsi tanti was a he was a small time business he used to run a you know small business in rajkot if i'm not wrong gujarat but there was this erratic power supply power would come and go off and this would impact production schedules everything else essentially it would impact the person's business so he bought couple of wind turbines he bought wind turbines and used them to generate uninterrupted power supply for to his industrial unit and slowly he realized that this was profitable if we could i could do it my at my level think of be, you know it being done at a national scale that's how he started his business this is a very capital intensive business the returns come don't come easy and they don't come fast but one has to put in a lot of money to begin with yeah in which 
cat which of the following categories has Swante Pabo won the Nobel Prize for 2022? Physi uh, physiology and medicine. So I'm going to discuss Nobel prizes now. Okay. At times I may not tell you for what they have won, you know, uh, for what particular contribution they have won, but it would help to know just the category and the names. Yeah. So we could start with physiology and medicine. You could write like the main title should be 2022 Nobel Prizes. Nobel Prizes. Okay. Physiology slash medicine dash. You could write this guy's name. Swante Pabo. In brackets, the country he belongs to, Sweden. Sometimes they give you this kind, they ask you these kinds of questions. To which country does the person belong, the winner belong? So Sweden in this case. Pabo is from Sweden. Okay. For what and all that, you don't really have to struggle now. Hmm? In this case, it was for his discoveries of the genomes of certain hominins, certain hominins, ancestors and all that, extinct as well as the current ones. Yeah. He's also been given the prize for his work on human evolution. Yeah. Next, physics. Physics. Okay, right. Physics. Uh, first one is one. Alain aspect. Alain aspect of France. Two, John Clauser, John Clauser, US, three, Anton Gelrager. I have always found these spellings to be slightly tough to remember. Yeah, now I remember only because for one reason. This is the name of the film that was a disaster. Yeah, J. Anton J. Liger of Austria. Of Austria. Okay. Three guys for work for their work on quantum dynamics, quantum physics. Don't try most of the stuff we don't understand, my friends. Okay, but anyway, for their work on physics, evolu uh, quantum evolution or quantum physics. This is for physics. Now let's write chemistry. Yeah, chemistry. Write one. Caroline Bertozzi. Caroline Bertozzi. France. No, no, no. Born in France. US. US, please. Right. Hmm? US. So, you could write this. US. Next, Martin Meldel. No, they call him Morton. Morton Meldel. Yeah. First time was like us. They are always difficult to pronounce. Hmm? Denmark. Because this scientist is from, chemist is from Denmark. Third one. The most interesting name. I write it here. Barry Carl Sharpless. Look at it. Sharpless. You say when someone's really smart, you say this person sharp. She's sharp. Hmm? Now this guy says I'm sharpless. Yeah? Sharpless. Now I want you to know something very, very interesting here. This is the second Nobel Prize for Barry. Yes, you could be asked this question. Barry was 
recipient of the 2011 chemistry nobel prize nobel prize chemistry so he's got the nobel prize twice he's the only living person to have won two nobel prizes only living nobel law you know two time nobel laureate i'm talking of li living yeah otherwise there is paul is there is john bardin pine uh, paul lining um, uh, then there is this mary curie i mean yeah so 2011 and 2022 for chemistry okay but the name is amazing na sharpless so don't go by names please Next, literature, 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 any, hey, by the way, Sharpless is from the US, Barry Sharpless is from the US, yeah, any, are now, any, are now, France, she's from France, and uh, you could write the names of three of her books. They might ask you this question, right? A woman's story, a woman's story, two, man's place. man's place three simple passion simple simple passion hmm. see i read extensively i read a lot but i have never ever heard of her that's the case with Nobel Literature Prizes. You never hear people, you know, the books of these guys or you never hear about the books of these guys, never hear about them. These are the people who are seriously very different from the kind of people, you know, I read. Yeah. Next. Peace. P-E-A-C-E. -E, peace. One. Memorial, comma, a Russian human rights organization, a Russian human rights organization, number two, um, there was this Ukrainian, center for Civil Liberties Center for Civil Liberties Ukraine Ukraine Okay So this is Russia This is Ukraine Third one Alright, what's her name here? Ailes Ha how do I remember this? Ale money beer. Okay. <laughs> Ales. Um, Belyatsky. Ales Belyatsky of Belarus. Human rights organizer. Human rights campaigner. You know, um, there's a thread here. Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia are all engaged in a major war. Now, what you need to understand is that this organization, they have rewarded those who are against Russia, against Belarus. The Center for Civil Liberties is in Ukraine, basically, so they have rewarded them. Memorial is a very is a human rights organization that's quite critical of the Russian government. And this lady, this person, sorry, has fought against, stood against the Belarusian dictator named Alexander Lukashenko. 
Lukashenko has run this country with an iron fist for more than two decades now. He says that I will give up power only when the people want me to step down. In the last election, which he says he had won, but his critics say he had stolen, okay, uh, from the opposition candidate. Um, these opposition leaders and all, human rights campaigners, they have fought against Alexander Lukashenko. And Lukashenko is a close friend of Vladimir Putin. So you will see the entire circle. Anti-Ukrainian forces have been rewarded. Okay. Yeah. Anti-Ukrainian, anti-Russian forces have been rewarded. Sorry. Uh, Anti-Russian forces have been rewarded. But those who favor... Uh, one favors uh, Ukrainian civil uh, human rights and all. The other favors human rights in um, Russia. But you need to understand that these are all political organizations. On paper, they are human rights, you know, organizations. But generally, they are all what are the what what we say, you know, they are all um, um, uh, leftist, socialist, and typically they are anti-right, anti-right. And so today, if you look at um, memo uh, Russia. Vladimir Putin is considered right, right winger. Um, if you look at Belarus's leader, Alexander Lukashenko, he's considered pro right and, you know, white right wing. You know, the right wingers are nationalists. Typically, they are pro business. Yeah. So, and they generally focus on one particular community. That's the idea. But they, it's not always true, of course. Hmm? There's one more, no? Economics, right. Economics, Nobel Prize. Economics. Uh, the official name of the Economics Nobel, uh, Nobel Prize is Sverige's Riksbank Riksbank Prize in Economic Sciences in economic sciences, in economic sciences, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Full name is economic sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel. See, in the will that Alfred Nobel made, he did not mention economics prize, but the economics prize was started in 1968 when. The Sveriges Riksbank, which is the national or the central bank of Swiss of Sweden. The central bank of Sweden is called Sveriges Riksbank. In 1968, it was celebrating its third 300th anniversary. 300th anniversary. And that year they started the tradition of the economics Nobel. Technically, economics, so it cannot be the word Nobel should not be used, but in common language it is used. Hmm? Because this only a prize in memory of someone, memory of Alfred Nobel. But otherwise, the prize is official prize is official name is Sveriges Riksbank Prize. Okay, so um, who are the winners? Yeah, who are the winners? One, Ben Bernanke. He is an ex-chairperson of the U.S. Central Bank, what they call the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve. Two. Philip Dibwig. Philip Dibwig. Third name is Douglas Diamond. All US. All US. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As per the you know, as per the UN trade, uh, sorry, as per the annual trade and development report of the UNCTAD, which is the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, the Indian economy's growth will drop to 5.7% and in the next year, it would be about 4.7%. Uh, 
Now, 5.7% is the lowest estimate you would find because the RBI says it's likely to be around 7% or somewhere around 65 to 7%. The IMF has said that it's going to be around 6.8%. I'm sorry, my eyes are burning. So, you never know what would be the final percentage growth rate because uh, these final numbers won't come till about 2025. The numbers for 2023 will come only in 2025, the final numbers, okay. There will always be numbers quoted with the government or provisional numbers, interim numbers, but final numbers come about 18 to 24 months later, okay. Now, what is UNCTAD? United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Conference on Trade and Development. Head Office Geneva. Head Office Geneva. And uh, it's headed by, uh, what's the name? Uh, Greens. Suddenly I forgot her name. Um, Rebecca. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rebecca Greenspan. Rebecca Greenspan of Costa Rica. Rebecca Greenspan of Costa Rica. Okay. See, inflation is eating into growth now. Inflation means high prices. High prices means to, to bring down high prices. The government is raising in the RBI, the government's raising interest rates. Now, when you raise interest rates, loans become expensive and deposits earn more. So when your loans become expensive, you don't borrow money. When you don't borrow money, you don't spend. When you don't spend, you don't create demand for goods and services. When you don't create demand for goods and services, the demand goes down. When the demand goes down, Hopefully, are likely that the prices go down. That would reduce inflation. Okay. So, to repeat, higher interest rates make loans expensive, meaning people stop borrowing, people borrow less to engage in productive activity, setting up a factory, stuff like that. So, lower production would mean, you know, lower employment generation. At the same time, lower employment generation would mean lower, you know, fewer people have income. When people have fewer people have income, the, the overall demand for goods and services also decreases. When the overall demand decreases, prices decrease. And this is one way of cooling inflation. That is, you know, raising interest rates. Now, there is something more here. What about interest rates on deposits? You, you know, I mentioned that the rates go up, so you earn more. When you earn more, you don't spend today. You postpone expenditure to earn more. When you postpone expenditure, you don't create demand for goods and services. When you don't create demand for goods and services, obviously the, the, the production, production will fall. And as the production falls, you know, employment generation decreases. Overall economic activity goes down. And that is how the GDP goes down. That's idea. Yeah. So um, we are struggling, but um, we are better placed than most other countries in the world. Okay. Yeah. Sergio Perez won the 2022 Singapore Grand Prix. Grand Prix in extremely tricky conditions at the Marina Bay Street circuit or circuit or circuit. Anyway. Perez drives for, he drives for Red Bull, Red Bull Racing, Red Bull Racing, you know, he used to drive for Force India. At the time it was uh, owned by Kingfisher and then Subrata Roy, but both, in fact, Subrata Roy and then Kingfisher both went bankrupt. Yeah. And today, you know, the, this guy drives for Red Bull. He belongs to Mexico, Mexico. Do you know? This Red Bull is a company from Thailand, originally manufactured in Thailand. The license for European operations, everything has been given to a family in Austria, if I'm not wrong. So they own the European side of business. 
you know this alfa romeo is owned by a company called stellantis what is it stellantis what does stellantis own you know you know ferrari um, earlier they used to own ferrari even now they own ferrari but in a different way lamborghini they own lamborghini um I'm so sorry. They don't own Lamborghini. They own Porsche. Not even Porsche. Sorry. Yeah. They, <laughs> I don't know how it came into my mind. Yeah. Uh, Stellantis owns um, Alfa Romeo. It owns Fiat. It owns Peugeot. It owns. um jeep chrysler dodge hmm ram there was a lot of brands stellantis owns all these brands theek okay? hai ferrari is more or less owned by stellantis which country reserve reverse its plan to tax the highest income tax rate of 45% for the wealthy that sparked turmoil in the financial markets and rebellion in the party maybe i'll tell you a bit of the story of britain what happened in britain uh, sometime in the next class or the class after that but know that the british government is in deep 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 trouble mary liz truss has just been elected as prime minister by her own party but unfortunately she is unlikely to serve uh, you know be the prime minister beyond this year this year will be very long actually okay yeah see the highest income tax bracket people who earn above 3 lakh pounds is 45% you understand that this is progressive tax so someone earns above a certain limit they have to pay 45% of that extra money see let's say the i'm just giving you an example okay it is 3 lakh pounds someone earns 3 lakh pounds someone earns let's say 3 lakh 50000 pounds so up to 3 lakh it is 40% something uh, 35% but above 3 lakhs it is 45% so what is the extra amount 50000 so 45% of 50000 someone has to pay in tax yeah tax is a kind of inflation inflation is a kind of tax yeah it eats into your money but uh, by the way um, what is um, uh, what is the name of the prime minister of um, just a second what is the name of the prime minister of um, it's actually gone over there so i may not be able to write things so i'll just sit here and talk with you okay so What's the name of the Prime Minister of Britain? To repeat, Liz Truss, T R U S S, Elizabeth Truss. That's the name, Elizabeth Truss. But in papers they write Liz L I Z L I Z Truss, T R U S S. Spanish Prime Minister's name is Pedro Sanchez. Pedro P E D R O Pedro Sanchez S A N C H E Z S A N C H E Z Sanchez, France. The president is Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron, M A C R O N. Italy, yeah, has a new prime minister. We had discussed her name a few days back. Giorgia Meloni, Meloni, M E L O N I. Germany has a chancellor, a chancellor named Olaf Scholz. Olaf, O L O F, Olaf. scholz s c h o l z s c h o l z hmm name the latest prototype of humanoid robot that was launched by tesla optimus see look at that you know it hasn't done great functions when it was introduced at the recent scientific um, you know uh, first uh, except for some basic functions like waving hands and moving around it didn't do much of things so why it has been launched by tesla uh, it uh, sank a lot of hearts many people were excited that yes 
you know, given that Elon Musk has a fascination for creating something, you know, weird, path breaking, this was a major disappointment. I saw the video, nothing much, because we already have certain robots like this, you yeah. um, Tesla is headquartered in a place called Austin, Texas. The town of Austin, A-U-S-T-I-N, A-U-S-T-I-N, Austin, comma, Texas, T-E-X-A-S, Austin, Texas. CEO is Elon, E-L-O-N, Elon Musk, M-U-S-K, Musk. See this Optimus, if you watch the Transformer movie series, there is a robot like this, isn't it? Optimus Prime, that is called Optimus Prime. This is Optimus, that's Optimus Prime, P-R-I-M-E. It's fun. Those movies are fun, except for the lousy acting by Megan Fox. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, the movies are fun. Yeah. Um, name the light combat helicopter, LCH, uh, that was indigenously, nationally, de natively developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and recently inducted into the Indian Air Force. You see that? It has a glass cockpit. Yeah. And it's, you could write a bit about this, you write this. Um, light combat helicopter dash dash named named Prachanda or Prachand named Prachand. It's there in the question uh, choices Prachand, which means, which means Fierce, F-I-E-R-C-E, -E. fierce means strong, robust, yeah, fierce, next, manufactured by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, next, Next, light attack helicopter, light attack helicopter, like attack helicopter. So instead of repeatedly writing helicopter, you can say hello, H-E-L-O. It's typically called hello. Light, like attack, light attack helicopter. Next, highest flight ceiling, highest flight Ceiling, C E I L I N G, ceiling among global attack helicopters. Global attack helicopters. Highest flight ceiling among global attack helicopters. So, what is flight ceiling? You underline flight ceiling. Pull it down arrow, write this. Highest altitude, highest altitude an aircraft can reach. An aircraft can reach. Okay. Now, if you want to know the, the altitude this helicopter can reach, yeah? you know, present can reach. So, we have written highest you know, what is it? Flight ceiling. At the end of that phrase, in brackets, you write 6,500 meters. 6,500 meters. Yeah, that's pretty high compared to most other helicopters in the world. It has a top speed of 268 kmph. 268 kmph. And uh, it is believed that this particular helicopter is different from most helicopters in the world because it has a glass cockpit, glass cockpit, and the bottom of it is crash proof. What is it? Crash proof, this one. This is considered among the best helico attack helicopters in the world. We are getting to do things that we have not done for a long, long time, my friends. Yeah. It's a good thing. Our, see, by having our own helicopters, we will reduce dependence on outsiders. And now we are looking at selling these to outsiders. Yeah. 
So Brahmos missiles have been purchased by Vietnam. Our light combat aircraft Tejas, which is considered one of the world's best, is now, you know, um, most likely will be acquired by Argentina. It will be acquired by, it will be purchased by Vietnam, most likely by Vietnam as well. And Malaysia has shown interest in Tejas, so much so that HAL, its maker, is opening an office in Malaysia. Yes. Yeah. So, things changing, my friends. It's a good thing. We reduce dependence on outsiders and improve our own manufacturing. And that way we can build our own defense industry and sell stuff outside, earn money. Yeah. And in the process, get allies. Yeah. Uh, who is the new director general of the Indo-Tibetan Border Police, ITBP, that guards the 3488 kilometer long line of actual control with China? Anish Dayal Singh. Okay, so what are the choices here? Shil Vardhan Singh, you could write this, director general of Central Industrial Security Force. Central Industrial Security Force. Central Industrial Security Force. Next, Virender Singh Patania, choice two, is Director General of Indian Coast Guard, ICG. Indian Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Next, look at four. Sujoy Lal Thausen is a Director General of the CRPF. Central Reserve Police Force. Central Reserve Police Force. Central Reserve Police Force. Look at choice 5. M.A. Ganapati is the Director General of the National Security Guard. The National Security Guard. The Pulampura village, Pulampara village, Panchayat recently achieved the distinction of becoming the first totally digital, digitally literate Panchayat in the country. This Panchayat is in Kerala. It's near Trivandrum, near Trivandrum. So what is a digital literacy? What has this particular town village achieved? You could write this. Um, Pulampara village, the Malayali friends here watching this video. Forgive me if I got the pronunciation incorrect. Pullampara, I think that's how they pronounce. R becomes R. Pullampara village um, undertook undertook Digi Pullampara Digi D I G I Digi Pullampara campaign campaign. to train to train all 4500 people all 4500 people in in 14 to 60 age group 14 to 65 age group 14 to 65 age group to train for all 4,500 people in 14 to 65 years age group to become to become digitally literate digital literate digitally literate is fine or to acquire digital literacy that's also true so people know how to use smartphones, people know all of the village, people in this village know how to use smartphones, they know how to use uh, you know, gadgets and all that, important the UPI stuff and all that, using garment services now. But you know, recently I read about a village in Karnataka, where the elders have banned the use of phones within uh, for about one and a half to two hours in the evening, so that people could actually talk with each other. <laughs> And when I read that, man, what have we come to, I thought. But then it's a good one, actually. Yeah, um, I, You would know some people who have strict curfew things at home. After 9 p.m., no use of phone like that.
I do that at home. So a lot of people do that actually. It's a good thing. Trust me. Yeah. Who was named winner of the prestigious 2022 United Nations Human Rights um, uh, Human uh, Human Rights um, Sorry uh, High Commissioner for Refugees um, That is UNHCR Human Rights High Commissioner for Sorry United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees Nansen Refugee Award for offering a haven Haven means shelter A place of safety Okay to over 1.2 million refugees and asylum seekers fleeing violence at the height of the Syrian conflict. You know, Syria saw a civil war starting in 2011. Okay, and there is a Sunni majority. 74% uh, of Syria is Sunni Muslim, while the ruler is a Shia Muslim. Okay, Bashar al-Assad is Shia. Um, Bashar was supported by Hezbollah, which is a militant group in Lebanon. Um, it was supported. He was supported by Iran, which is again a Shia Republic. And uh, if you look at the, the Sunni militant groups, the Sunni um, groups in Syria, they were supported by uh, Qatar and uh, what is it? Uh, Saudi Arabia. But then, you know, um, these things are, they only likely get bad, bad, from bad they get worse, yeah. And that's what happened. Bashar is still there. He's still there, my friends, yeah. But the conflict led to two things. A lot of people left the country to become refugees elsewhere. And some people became refugees in their own country. So when someone becomes a refugee in their own country, they are called internally displaced persons like the Kashmiri Pandits in India. Yeah, they are IDP, Internally Displaced Persons. Okay. So Angela Merkel, not Angela. Angela, it's Angela. What is it? Not Angela. It's Angela. Angela Merkel was a Chancellor of Germany um, who welcomed Syrian refugees with open hands. Now, for this, she has been given this Nansen Refugee Award. Yeah. A mile ago, we mentioned the name of the German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz. Olaf Scholz succeeded Merkel. Okay. Yeah. What are the choices here? One, two, three, four are all ex-leaders of their countries. Yeah. Look at five. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is the current president of Turkey or Turkey. Is it? Turkey is a new name of Turkey. Yeah. Whom of the following persons have been voted the you know, International Hockey Federation Men's and Women's Goalkeepers of the Year 2022? In the men's category, the best goalkeeper is Shijesh, while in the women's, it is Savita Punia. Savita Punia. You could write a couple of things here. One, where is the head office of FIH? Okay, and second, who is the, uh, the guy running the show here? You could write FIH, FIH, or International Hockey Federation. That's up. You know, this particular thing you see, Federation International de Hockey is the French name, but in English, we say International Hockey Federation. Okay, International Hockey Federation, men's and women's. So, where is this? Um, uh, International Hockey Federation head office is in Lausanne, L A U. I repeat, L A U S A N N E. Lausanne, Lausanne, comma Switzerland, Switzerland. Next, acting sorry, acting chairman. Acting President, Acting President, they don't have a full-time President now, Acting President, Dash, Saif Ahmed, S-E-I-F, S-E-I-F, Saif Ahmed, A-H-M-E-D, Saif Ahmed, in brackets, Egypt, Egypt, E-G-Y-P-T, Egypt, Egypt. Okay. Yeah. 
Which country recently launched a space tug capable of shifting satellites between orbits? Iran. What is it? Iran. So, what is a space tug? It, you could write this. Space tug is used to transfer is used to transfer a satellite transfer or move a satellite from one orbit from one orbit o r b i t from one orbit to another to another and what is the name of the iranian name of this space tug you could write this iranian space tug dash mm, it's called saman s a m a n s a m a n s a m a n there are protests going on in iran yeah who is the president of iran ibrahim raisi ibrahim Rezi, R A I S I, Ibrahim Rezi, Ibrahim Rezi. Qatar's king is Tamim Al Hamad, Tamim, T A M I M, Tamim, not Al Hamad, Bin Hamad, B I N, B I N, Hamad, H A M A D, Tamim Bin Hamad. Al Thani, A L Al Dash Thani, T H A N I Thani. Al Thani is a surname. Tamim is a first name. Bin means son of. So Hamad, son of Hamad. That is Tamim, son of Hamad, belonging to the dynasty of the Thani. Okay. Yeah. So Al Thani means the Thani. You want to know the name of the king of Saudi uh, Kuwait, right? Nawaf, N A W A F, Nawaf, Nawaf, Al Al Zabar, Al Zabar, J A B B A R, Zabar, Al Sabah. S A B A H Al Sabah Nawaf Al Zabar Al Safa Al Sabah Who of the following persons won the Nobel Prize um, in chemistry? I think we mentioned these guys. We mentioned that um, Sharpless has won the two has won two Nobel Nobel Chemistry prizes uh, this year and eleven years back in two thousand eleven. Yeah. You know what? He became blind in one eye when a particular, a, 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 some kind of a glass instrument, some test tube or something, it exploded when he was working in the laboratory. He became blind in one eye, and that is when he said that I can never overemphasize the importance of wearing glasses, or at all times when you are in the lab, at all times, not just when you are experimenting, at all times. Yeah. With which country's central bank has the National Payments Corporation of India recently signed a historic memorandum of understanding to launch the rupee debit card? Uh, it's Oman. See, you could write this: National Payments Corporation of India, dash, owned by RBI, owned by RBI, owned by RBI, dash, head office Mumbai. Head office Mumbai. Head office Mumbai. Um, MD. MD. Dash Dilip Asbe. Dilip Asbe. A S B E Asbe. Dilip Asbe. Okay. Next. Or you could write dash. Continue there. Dash. Creator of, creator of UPI, UPI in brackets, Unified Payments Interface, Unified 
payments interface unified payments interface and rupee debit card rupee debit card i am also writing yeah so that i am little familiar yeah <laughs> next uh, oman is the seventh country next one right oman is the seventh country to adopt to adopt upi and rupee and rupee debit card Rupee debit card. Next, you may wonder what are the seven countries, na? Huh? Right. Um, the other six countries are. You could write this. The other six countries are. I have written here. Hmm? The other six countries are Nepal. Bhutan, so among India's neighbors, Nepal and Bhutan, both are on the shoulders of India. Okay, next, UAE, United Arab Emirates, United Arab Emirates. Next, Malaysia and Singapore. Now both are neighbors. Malaysia and Singapore are neighbors. Malaysia and Singapore. No. Nepal, Bhutan, UAE, Malaysia, Singapore, and the last one. And France. And France. Hmm. And France. Some of the world's most advanced countries are adopting India's technology. Yeah, because the UPI is supremely successful. Um, you know, UPI, if you want to write, you could write just to give you an idea. Right. In September 2022, in September 2022, a total of a total of Eleven point one six lakh crore. Eleven point one six lakh crore. Worth of transactions. Eleven point one six lakh crore worth of transactions. Transactions. Through 678 crore transactions, we could write this also. Through 678 crore transactions, through 678 crore transactions, took place. Took place. Think about it. 678 crore transactions happened. I use UPI, you use UPI, yeah, we all use UPI. 678 crore in one month. Think about it. Then look at the number of transactions that happened. And it almost never fails. Yeah. The intermediary systems may be wrong, like a bank or, you know, a, a GPA or a phone pay systems may be wrong. But the UPI always goes smooth. How much money was transferred? Through the 678 crore transactions, 11 lakh 16 thousand crore rupees were transferred. Money went this side to that side. 11 lakh 16 thousand crore. And this UPI started just a few years back. Okay. No one thought about it. Now, when the Digital India Movement la was launched, even before that, um, you know, um, this de demonetization happened, everything. You know, 
people were like you know people poor people don't know how to use digital mediums and uh, you know the people were this politicians the opposition pol- i'm not defending the prime minister here okay i'm just talking about how people were skeptical of indians taking to technology advanced technology look at this today the chai wala you know the sabji wala you know, the, the vegetable seller the tea seller you know uh, every every kind of you know um, you know trader has this kind of uh, qr code quick reaction code which enables us to use upi yeah i mean it's it's, it's general world of good to people it makes it has made my life easy because i normally don't carry cash yeah except for 100 rupees which is for emergency purposes i don't carry cash which most people do these days people it's always unsafe to carry cash it's not just unsafe it's like you know do you really need cash kind of thing when you have upi everywhere when you have you know credit cards debit cards on some other occasions yeah so things have changed the world is adopting our technology recently at some tech fest in uh, singapore upi was ranked the world's safest and fastest method of money transfer yes uh, the union home minister amit shah recently announced the scheduled tribe status for the pahadi community pahadi means mountainous in jammu and kashmir so how many scheduled castes are there or how many scheduled tribes are there see i was going through this data and i found that in the constitution first order it's called constitution scheduled caste first order constitution scheduled caste first order if i belong to caste x and the name of my caste appears in that list in the first order then my caste becomes a scheduled caste if i belong to tribe y and the name of my tribe appears in the scheduled you know in the constitution sh- schedule tribes order then my caste becomes a scheduled tribe so if the names appear in the first order constitution order scheduled caste or scheduled tribes then such communities become in the scheduled caste or scheduled tribes okay so the pahadi community has now been included in the constitution first order which effectively means it becomes become a scheduled tribe community okay now this gives a lot of benefits uh, for um, you know uh, members of this community which is good actually otherwise they would be left behind yeah now let's look at something more here how many castes are there you could write this um 1108 castes 1108 castes 110 eight scheduled caste not caste scheduled caste and and 744 scheduled tribes and 744 scheduled tribes 744 scheduled tribes yeah okay Sandeep Kumar Gupta is the new chairman and managing director of Gas Authority of India Limited. He succeeded Manoj Jain. Manoj Jain. ONGC India's largest oil refiner is headed by Subhash Kumar. Subhash Kumar. I am putting it here. Subhash Kumar. Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited is headed by who is the chairperson? Nalin Singhal. Nalin Shingal S H I N G H A L Nalin Shingal Next Indian Oil Corporation Limited IOCL Indian Oil Corporation Limited is headed by Shrikant Shrikant Madhav Shrikant Madhav Vaidya V A I D Y A Vaidya last one ntpc national thermal power corporation national thermal power corporation is headed by what's his name gur gur uh, gurdeep singh gurdeep singh yeah gurdeep singh more than 5000 lakh metric tons of sugar cane was produced in india yeah, in the last season uh, the find the correct statements about india's sugar production 
India was the world's largest sugarcane producer. I see, I'm doubtful about this because um, till 2020, Brazil's production was twice India's production. So I'm not very sure. I'll come back to this a little later with you. Okay. To you, I'll come back with better data because from what I know, in 2020, Brazil produced 40% of the world's sugarcane, India produced 20%. So in one year, going past 20% is a very, very big number. You know? Chalo, this data is already there, we will not discuss. It says all of these are right. Whom the following is or the authors of Against All Odds, the Indian Information Technology Story or the Information Technology Story of India, IT of Story of India. It is um, all of them, of course. But do you know who is one? The other two, Krishna Narayanan and Daya Sindhu N. They belong to an organization that collates business, digital history and all. But Chris Gopalakrishnan, who is he? You could write this. His name is not Chris. His name is Gopalakrishnan Senapati. Okay, Senapati Gopalakrishnan. Chris is the short form of Gopalakrishnan. So, he is one of the co-founders of Infosys. One of the co-founders of Infosys. Infosys was started in 1981 by seven persons seven persons if you want to know i'll give you the name Even if you don't want if you don't want to know ignore but i would suggest you write one n r narayana murthy n r narayana murthy n r narayana murthy okay n r narayana murthy is nagavara ramara narayana murthy don't write n r narayana murthy number two Nandan Nilakani, Nandan, N A N D N, Nandan Nilakani, N I L E K A N I, Nilakani. Three, Senapati Gopalakrishnan, Senapati Gopalakrishnan. Okay, let's not use the full names or the surnames, okay? S Gopalakrishnan. Four, N S Raghavan, N S Raghavan. N.S. Raghavan. Next. S.D. Shibulal. S. S.D. S for Sikandrabad. D for Delhi. Okay. S.D. Shibulal. S.H.I.B.U.L.A.L. Shibulal. And no. There are two more now. Na N R Narayan Murthy, Nandan Dilakanik, Senapati Kopala Krishnan, um, N S Raghavan, S D Shibulal, and um, K Dinesh, K K Dinesh, and Ashok Arora, Ashok Arora. So these are the guys who started Infosys, my friends. Okay. Regarding the ban on the Popular Front of India and its associates, who was appointed as the presiding officer of the Tribunal for Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, Dinesh Kumar Sharma, who is the head of, uh, who is the judge in the Delhi High Court, who is the judge in the Delhi High Court. Yeah. You look at choice two, Rajesh Bindal, I think he heads, uh, he is the Chief Justice of the Allahabad High Court. Allahabad High Court. Yeah. You don't worry too much about this. You look at choices, um, you know, Prashant Kumar Mishra, I think AP High Court. Yeah, AP High Court. AP High Court Chief Justice. At 34, Ibrahim Tarore has become the world's youngest serving leader, youngest serving leader currently. He is the interim president of Burkina Faso. This is Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. The capital is Oogadougou. You can see here O U A G A D O U G O U Oogadougou. Next, Mali. The capital is Bamako. B A M A K O. Uh, Senegal. This is Senegal. Yeah. yeah, the capital is Dakar. D A K A R. Dakar. Sudan. This is. Sudan. Khartoum is the capital. Khartoum. K H A R T O U M. Khartoum. In brackets, 
where the blue nile where the blue nile n i l e blue nile meets the white nile meets the white nile n i l e nile hmm see these are the niles yeah, this and this yeah. it's clearly mentioned here this is a white nile this is a blue nile yeah. okay chard this is h this is chard this is a capital n apostrophe d zamina j a m e n a zamina you don't need to know the name of the presidents of these places see um, uh, sudan has an interim uh, uh, leader yeah um, you don't need to know the guy's name you don't need to look at mali mali also has an interim uh, leader because there was a military coup here yeah. i mean asimi koita is the name of the guy in mali um al fata abdul burhan al fata is a leader of sudan don't write i'm telling you it's not important so what else ah that's about it guys